Hello, welcome to River of Life Ministry. I'm so glad you're with us. My name is Ellen. I hope you enjoy the service. Father, we just thank you. And we love your presence. And Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Spirit of the living God. And I pray, God, today that you take the word out by the Spirit. And that each one of us hears it in our own language. God, that you go deep. Deep to our hearts, Lord, deep to our inner man. And pull out all of those things, God, that you want to bring to the surface that needs to go away in Jesus' name. Bring forth the dross and move it by the hand of God in Jesus' name, by the fire of God. But also, Lord, that you would go deep, deep within our hearts and just, Father, bring out the attributes and the character of who you are in our lives. No more excuses. <laughs> No more. Lord, we just surrender ourselves to you, spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, our mind, will, and our emotions to you, God, and our bodies. Lord, that they're set apart, consecrated for such a time as this. Lord, that you are building an army. And Lord, that you are building a place, God, for healing and restoration and relationship, God. That you are building, Lord, within us just a place of worship, a place of worship in each and every one of us. So, Lord, today, I pray, God, that you would have your way in our hearts, God, that you would have your way in our minds, that you would have your way in our bodies in Jesus' name. The name of Jesus is above every name. It is above addiction. Is it above anger? It is above alcoholism. It is above abuse. It is above, Father God, loneliness. It is above disease, God. It is above everything. Everything has to kneel to the name of Jesus. And you have given us the authority to walk in this, Lord. So that we would walk in the authority that has been given to us by the Son of God. Because we know in whom we believe. And he is able to do abundantly more or anything that we could ever imagine. If we will commit all things into his hand, he will bring forth what is necessary and we will trust him. We trust you, Father. We give ourselves away this morning in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I love, I love, I love your for Mary. This is her first time following me. What's your name? Joe. Joe, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And I want you to know that, um, can I just pray for you? Yeah, sure. I, is it okay if I put hands on your sure. head? Okay. So, Father, first of all, I thank you for Joe. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, all shame, all guilt, all condemnation, right now we just remove all from your son. Lord, I thank you that he will not be confused. I thank you that he will have clarity of mind. I thank you, God, that I thank you for cleansing him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. I want you to know that you're feeling very warm right now. And I want you to know it is the Holy Spirit that is touching you and cleansing you. Uh, and when I was praying about the heart of God going deep into the heart of man, you were the vision before me. And I seen the hand of God going deep inside of you, Joe, and bringing to, to the surface things that you that aren't pleasing to you nor the Lord that he shall remove by his hand. But I also seen that him just embracing you and telling you that he loves you, Amen. that he loves you, that his love is different than the love that you've encountered in the world. And you, you don't understand love. And God says that he wants to show you love and love is him. So, Lord, I just pray, Father, peace, 
that passes his own understanding. God, that you would move in his heart and his mind. And Lord, that you would restore him to his youth in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Joe. Amen. Thank you, Joe. Woo! So, who's on the throne? Woo! Yeah. Jesus. Amen. It is all about him. All the glory goes to God, and he loves to use his people, uh, but he'll use a donkey if it's necessary. He'll use whatever is necessary to get his point across. And what I love about what just happened with Joe is that God recognized him. Amen. God recognized him in a place that he's not super comfortable, but God recognized him. Amen. He highlighted him to pour love out on him. And I love that Jesus does that. He does it with us all the time. But sometimes we're too busy. Sometimes we're just too busy to take the time that's needed with the Lord, right? And so, uh, Mac, McKenzie, you know that name is pretty cool. I just watched um, The Shack this weekend, you know, and I thought, man, that is just the coolest name. And I forgot that we had a Mac and that we had a McKinsey. Amen. I don't know if you've ever watched that movie. Have you watched that movie? Part of it. Okay, you need to finish it through. Because when you go into, when he goes into the cave and it talks about wisdom, and, and he's encountering wisdom, which is another form, another attribute of God. And so, and she talks to him about um, judgment, and, and he just make, brings it all around, and it becomes very clear as why God cannot send a, a son that he loves and another son that he loves. He can't choose which one is to be condemned to hell. And so I don't know why that's important in your life, but I believe that, did you see that part of the movie? Oh, you're gonna like it. Okay, you need to watch that movie. I, I just want you to know that the Lord has something in that movie for you, and it's gonna clear up something that you've had a question about for a very, very long time. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Isn't that just crazy? I remember I went to a revival meeting in um, uh, Muskegon to the Shiloh Church in, um, oh, what, what was his name? Fields. Roy Fields and Melanie, his wife, were there. And it was so funny. One of the meetings, he talked about Hook, the movie Hook. He took us through that whole movie, Hook, and he brought out every spiritual attribute in that movie, which brought the gospel to life through a movie that we just watch and think it's all fantasy. But somehow God anointed him to be able to take this and bring it to life according to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Can I tell you, you got to spit the bones out? That's right. And chew the meat. That's yeah. right. That's right. You know, you got to throw the bath water out without the baby. Yeah. Right? Bath water's dirty. Keep, Keep the baby. <laughs> and so often we throw out, when we choke, we throw up the meat. We say, I don't want none of it. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's religion. Just let me tell you, you got a wrong mindset. There's certain things the Holy Spirit will bring alive in you and say, stay completely away from that. Do not go there. Because there's so much other things in that movie or that song or that play or that circumstance that is so full of evil that your mind will be influenced that way versus by maybe the little truth of God. That's right. I remember when the movie Noah came out, I was so excited. I walked out of that movie theater so doggone mad because it was fooling people, taking something that is God and made it so dark. It was made by Gothic. It was horrible. And I immediately let everybody know, if you ain't seen that movie, don't go watch it. Because it is a mockery. It is so twisted about what the word says about Noah and all of that. It was horrible. It was horrible. I just can't explain the darkness that we don't understand. But that's why there's certain things we have to stay completely away from. God says, I am a jealous God, and there shall be no other gods before me. And it doesn't matter if you like spooks and movies and vampires. If that's not what you're supposed to do, and the Lord has convicted your heart, you need to stay away from that. Because obviously there's something in there that's not for you. And it might distort your mind into the things of God. You might go to these places where this is your reality instead of the reality. 
of God. Amen. So this morning I woke up. If you guys all want to go to Luke chapter 10, somebody will holler out the page number. The Bibles in here are all the same. Hallelujah. Lorna, can you pick up a Bible and hand it to my dear friend there that is videoing Miss Mary? Hallelujah. So Luke chapter 10 is where we're going to be going. 1195. 1195 is the page number, so everybody can see what the Word of God says. 1195, Luke chapter 10. So, this morning when I woke up, this is what I heard. I love, I love. I love your presence. So I'm laying in bed. I love, I love, I love your presence. I get to church. So I go down out and I download a new song, the, one, the version that we sang, which is a little bit different, but it's very simple in lyrics, so you can learn the lyrics. So when you're out, when the Holy Spirit wants to minister to you, he can bring forth very simple lyrics because it's just repetitive. I was telling my son this morning that maybe he should have his son sit down and write some sentences. Remember writing sentences? <laughs> Remember all that when we were kids? But it's so repetitive that it comes up often because we've written it out. Not only did we visualize it and speak it, but we engaged it. So there's a lot of senses going on, and so it goes into the brain. And so when we sing repetitive music, which I did not like, um, it gets into your spirit, gets into your mind. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Prince in the power of the air, don't be distracted. Amen. If you, you might need to put your phone on airplane mode unless you're using it to share the video. This is an important message. I'll say that very often. They're always important. Every single one of them. But this is what God said to me in that song I got in here this morning. And I downloaded it. And then, of course, he gave me your presence. We sang that again. Tried to send it out from here. I wouldn't go. I'm like, oh, okay, little warfare. Okay, God, under my feet in Jesus' name. That's right. And this is what he said. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love you, Jan. I love, I love, I love your presence. Jan sent me a text this morning in the midst of that conversation with the Lord. And I text her back. It's funny how he knows everything. Amen. Isn't it? I mean, God loves our presence. Our presence. That's what he was singing over me this morning. It wasn't for me to sing, oh God, I love your presence, although that's part of it, because I did sing that. But he was singing over me. Yes. Amen. First thing in the morning, I love your presence. I love your presence. And I'm like, oh God, I just love your presence. And I, I was like, oh, okay, get ready for church. You got to get here on time. I was running a little bit late, but made it. And I come in here and I get in the presence of the Lord. And he said, I was singing over you Amen. because I love your presence. Amen. Amen. Tammy, what's that verse that you keep getting? If my people will hear my voice, say it. If my people who are called by my if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and, and, and seek my name. Seek, seek, seek my, my face, face, I will forgive their sins and heal their land. That's what I'm hearing. And that's only done in his presence. 
So many, often people think that is such a bad thing, but can I tell you that that is what God is doing in each and every one of us as individuals? Amen. Our land is right here. And from here it goes to our homes, and from here it goes into our communities, our jobs, our whatever. In my life, from here it goes from here to my home with my husband, to my children and family, and then to the church. So it's important that I stay on my face before God in his presence. As I draw near to him, he draws near to me. If you seek me with all your heart, you'll find me. But if you're too busy and your phone's right there, I can't read the Bible on my phone at home because I get too many interruptions and I see too many other things and my mind automatically knows that I have a wealth of information and abilities on here. So I have to put this away so that I will walk in the wealth and the abilities of the Holy Spirit without distraction, without having to make my mind keep coming back. That's right. I like to have this so much to find what I need and to preach from because it's very quick for me to go from here to there. So in Luke chapter 10, or uh, yeah, book, book Luke chapter 10, 10 verse 38 now it happened as they went that they entered a certain village and a certain woman named Marcia, Martha welcomed him into her house and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus feet and heard his word and that's what happened to me this morning. I came in, and I, I, the doors aren't open until about a quarter to because I need that ex exclusive time. I'm out of my house, away from my cute little furry dog and all the distractions of my house, and I come here, and I entered in, and I just sat in the presence of the Lord, and that's when he started speaking to me. And all of a sudden, I'm like, wow, this is just so awesome, God, just sitting here it's peaceful it's quiet nothing's happening it's just me and you and that happens in my house too I don't have to be here and that's when I heard I love your presence I want you to tell my people that I love their presence and so often we can be distracted and not want to come to church and it is not wrong to miss church because we've got families and we have other objects at times. But if you're just staying home because you got up late or you don't like, you have nothing to wear, in this church that should never bother you as long as you have clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I have robes. <laughs> <laughs> and so often we might not feel like it. Or so often we might get invited to go do something fun, but yet we know that we're being tugged to go spend some time with God first and then go out and do them things. And so often we decide to do those things and then we wonder why we have had a drab week or we just don't feel the same or we start fighting with depression that we didn't last week but yet we didn't spend any time in the presence of the Lord. Do you know that he loves your presence? He loves it. Just like we love his when he comes down and he touches us and we feel his tangible presence. Amen. But he loves yours. It can be in the car. It doesn't have to be silent. It can be in the car. I was on my way to Ludington yesterday, and God and I had awesome time in the car. And I kept listening to repeat on a song. And that song was so anointed, it just kept me praying, kept me speaking life over death, kept me praying for the people of this church, kept me in a place in his presence all the way. Because I chose to do it. That's us. So what did Mary do? It said Mary also sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his word. When did she hear his word? When she sat at his feet. When did the disciples, when were they taught? When they sat and heard his words. When was the multitude healed? When they heard the word. Him, Jesus. Whether you're hearing it here or you're hearing it here, here, wherever, his word is powerful. His name is above every name. 
His name is Jesus, but his name is Word as well. And when you sit at the feet of Jesus and you're in the Word, you are sitting at the feet of Jesus. And he loves your presence. He loves your attention. He loves it. You're like, wow, that's awesome. Well, wow, I'm going to go look up this. and Or you ponder it. It might only be a scripture, but it's going to make a difference in your lives. Yeah. Mine and yours. He says, but Martha was distracted with much serving. There's a lot of good God things you can be doing out there. That's why, you know, when people would be in the kitchen, I would go come out of my office just before 11 and say, you guys, okay, come on, let's go. Time to get in there. I don't want anybody distracted during doing services in this church when they should be in here. Yep. Worshiping the Lord and entering into his presence. That's right. And that's why we changed the way we clean the church. We clean the church after the service. We used to clean the church before service, between pre-service and service, and that just wasn't working because people were staying out of pre-service and cleaning and then coming in. So what they were doing is robbing from themselves the setting at the feet of Jesus. And so seeing that, I was like, okay, Lord, what do I do? And he gave me wisdom what to do because we don't want to be Martha's. It was good, good that she was serving the master, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. It was good that she was cooking and doing dishes, but she missed her opportunity. And she complained. But what does Jesus say? Martha, Martha, you're worried and troubled about many things. So he wasn't just talking about the place she was serving that day. He was talking about the condition of her heart. Because she chose to stay busy. She chose to do good God things. She chose to do these things instead of sitting at the feet of Jesus. And the Lord says to me today, my people need to be in my presence more. I'm calling them. I want to do great and mighty things, but they won't sit here. They're too busy. We're too busy. Joyce, you're too busy. Stop doing those things. He's been speaking to me a lot. But I didn't realize why. He said, because I love your presence. And in my presence is where you are filled. In my presence is where you hear me. In my presence is holiness. It doesn't mean you're holy, although it says be holy as I am holy. you got to let that transpire in your life. But when you're in the presence of the Lord and you're there... It's happening. But we have to choose. So I love his presence, especially when it's tangible. When I got to work at it, it's a little harder. But I not like it so much because I can't feel anything. But it doesn't matter if I feel it. He's faithful. Because if I'm seeking him and I've shut off my phone and I've put away other books and I'm not allowing other distractions to come into my life, I'm seeking him with everything that's in me. And he says, and if you seek me with everything that is in you, you'll find me. You'll find me for the good of River of Life ministry. You'll find me for the good of your husband. You'll find me for the good of your children. You'll find me for the good of your grandchildren. You'll find me that I can be able to become more active in your life because you are choosing me above everything else. Amen. Do not become religious about this because then it becomes about works. Works aren't wrong as long as they're associated with faith and God's called you to them. But when you're doing works to gain something, to earn something, it's all you. It's all you. It's all me. <laughs> so I love your presence. So when it said that, that Mary sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word, but Martha was distracted with much serving. She was doing way more than she should. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sisters left me to serve alone? <laughs> Therefore, tell her to help me. Boy, what a rebuke she got. Martha, Martha, you are missing the boat. You threw the baby out with the bathwater. You are boasting in your works. You're saying, look at me, what I'm doing for Jesus. Well, why are you sitting at his feet? 
So was her heart right? Probably not. And Mary just didn't care. Most Marys that you meet kind of are all over the place. They don't care. They're just after Jesus. Amen. Not that they don't care, but I'm thinking about um, Mary, Sharon's daughter, and she has so much joy, and I can just see her not caring when she's after something that value, that's valued in her heart. I'm not saying that all of us have the same value in our heart for Jesus, but we don't. So I am saying that. <laughs> yeah, that was clear as mud. Well, fear versus faith. You speak what you're hearing. And it's not okay because he's provided such an awesome way for us to enter into his presence. There are so much different types of worship music out there that if you're a headbanger, they even have that in worship. That, like, woo, for me. But, um, you know, but then there's the old hymns. Everything's out there. There's no excuse for anybody not to be able to enter into the presence of the Lord. And if you don't like anything but silence and just you and God and you have candles burning and the curtains are shut and the dog is put in a cage, whatever you got to do, do it. Because at his feet is where you're going to hear him. You can run to me all day long. You can run to Tammy. You can run to anybody in this church because you got to have them pray for you because they hear God. Well, you can hear God for yourself. It is not wrong to be prayed for, but if you're going after the person instead of the spirit, not so good. Set at his feet. So what I'm hearing this morning for us at River of Life Ministry and those that are in earshot of this, whether today or in the future, is that God is calling us to set at his feet, that he is speaking to us and we're so busy and distracted that we're not listening to him anymore. I keep saying to God, God, I remember when. God, I remember when. God, I remember when. God, I missed this. God, I missed that. And he said, you sat at my feet more often. Yeah. But you're busy being pastor, and, and you're trying to meet everybody's needs, and you're trying to meet with all the people that want to meet for you, and you're going to miss the boat if you don't start meeting with me. Yeah. So I pulled back. I have to. I have to say no. I have to not. It's not that I'm not there for you because I'm probably doing more good for you being at the feet of Jesus than I'll ever do good Amen. sitting across the table sharing a salad with you. But what about you? What about you? There is power, power, wonder working power. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. He made a way for us to enter into his presence. The veil was ripped. It was torn. Everything changed at that moment. Everybody that desired to be in his presence could never be there. But we can and lots of times we don't desire it because it takes time and it takes effort. Relationship does. If we get it right here, you will get it right here. That's right. Amen. God is on the move, Hallelujah. which means we are the move of God. If you'll let him. If you set at his feet, mopey, complaining. It's okay to do a little bit of that to get yourself cleansed. Well, that's it. Because he has rose you from the dead. Amen. You are to dance on those graves. Amen. You are to be victorious in Jesus. You are to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Your sins are forgiven and they're behind you. You are to be walking word of God. You are to be all that he has called you to be as individuals, but only what he's called you to be. Not what I think you should be. Not what my mom thinks you should be. Not what the guy Joe down the road thinks you should be. You need to only figure that out between you and God sitting at his feet. And stand underneath your spiritual covering. That is one of the most important things that you need in the body of Christ. Don't go out from beyond it and try to create your own ministry. It will not happen. You will hit doors, hit doors, hit doors. They will close. You might start them and they'll close because you can only do so much in your own strength. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
If you just love God and serve God and you'll do anything, you'll wash the bathrooms, you'll vacuum the floors, you'll clean the seats, you'll straighten up the Bibles, you'll do whatever just to serve him and serving other people, that's what he's looking at. That's not a busyness that should not be done because your service is usually not seen by everybody, but it's seen by him. But beyond that, nothing, nothing, not the bathrooms, not nothing, your husband, your spouse, your girlfriend, addiction, nothing should be above Jesus. Amen. Stop making your own gods. That's what I'm hearing. This is for a specific somebody in here. I already know who it is. I'm not going to call them out. It'd be embarrassing, but I'm going to speak the word. It's correction. God says, stop making other things your God. There's spiritualism, and you need to stop it right now. You stay at the feet of Jesus. You, you will have more than you can ever imagine if you will stay at the feet of Jesus because he is God. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we just thank you and worship you and praise you. You are amazing, and there's no God like you. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power setting at your feet, just receiving, just allowing you to speak to us. Thank you, God, for waking me up this morning with that awesome song. And I thought, God, it was all about you, and it is. But yet you turned it and you said, this is about you. This is about my church. Tell my people I love their presence. Father, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, all God's people said. love your presence but I thank you God that you love ours that you're calling us deeper that you're calling us higher that you're calling us wider God you're stretching us God you're showing us what it's like when we've wandered away and not sat with you Lord how much life is harder you didn't promise and we wouldn't have trials and tribulations, but in these trials and tribulations, you'll never leave us or forsake us. We thank you that you're amazing and we love you so much. Touch your people today, God. Bless their time as they sit at your feet. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen, amen and amen. If